Om Bhura Bhuva Svata Tsavitura Varenyam Bravo Deva Shadi Mai Dio Yona Prajodayat Om Shanti 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 Namaskar my dear friends This is video number 40 on Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna Pramahansa. This video starts with the Master's birthday, Sunday, February 22, 1885. Sri Ramakrishna was sitting on the northeast veranda outside his room at Dakshineshwar. It was about 8 o'clock in the morning. Many devotees, including Narendra, Rahal, Grish, Baburam, and Surendra, were present. They were celebrating the Master's birthday, which had fallen on the previous Monday. M arrived and saluted him. The Master signed to him to take a seat near him. Narottam was singing Kirtan. Sri Ramakrishna was in partial ecstasy. The subject was Krishna's meeting with his cowherd friends in the meadow. Krishna had not yet arrived. The cowherd boys were restless for him. One of them said that Mother Yasoda was preventing Krishna from coming. Balai, Balram's pet name, said in a determined voice that he would bring Krishna with the sound of his horn. Balai's love for Krishna knew no bounds. The music went on. The cowherd boys and girls heard Krishna's flute and were filled with spiritual emotion. Master's love for Narendra. Suddenly, Sri Ramakrishna's eyes fell on Narendra, who was sitting very near him. He stood up and went into Samadhi. He stood there, touching Narendra's knee with his foot, regaining consciousness. He took his seat again. Narendra left the room. The music went on. Sri Ramakrishna whispered to Baburam, There is aksir, sweet milk preparation in the room. Give Narendra some. Did the master see Narendra as the embodiment of God? After the Kirtan, Sri Ramakrishna returned to his room. Tenderly, he began to feed Narendra with sweets. It was Grishis. Grishis believed that God himself had been born in the person of Sri Ramakrishna. Grish to the Master, your ways are like Krishna's. He too pretended many things to his mother Yashoda. Master, true, it was because Krishna was an incarnation of God. When God is born as a man, he acts that way. You see, Krishna easily lifted the hill of Govardhan with his hand, but he made Nanda believe that he found it very hard to carry a footstool. Greece. Yes, sir, I have understood you now. Sri Ramakrishna was sitting on the small couch. It was about 11 o'clock. Ram and the other devotees wanted to dress him in a new cloth. The master said, no, no, pointing to an English educated man, he said, what will he say about it? At the earnest request of the devotees, he said, well, since you insist, I shall have to agree. 
the devotees were arranging the master's meal in the room he asked narendra to sing narendra sang in dense darkness o mother thy formless beauty sparkles therefore the yogis meditate in a dark mountain cave in the lap of boundless dark on mahanirvana's waves up born peace flows serene and in exhaustible taking the form of the void in the robe of darkness wrapped who art thou mother seated alone in the shrine of smadhi from the lotus of the fear scattering field flash thy loves lightnings the separate face shines forth with laughter terrible and loud master smadhi as narendra sang the line who art thou mother seated alone in the shrine of smadhi sri rama krishna went into deep smadhi and lost all outer consciousness after a long time when he was regaining partial consciousness the devotees seated him on the carpet and placed a plate of food before him still overcome with divine emotion he began to eat the rice with both hands he said to bhavnath feed me because of his ecstatic mood he could not use his own right hand bhavnath began to feed him sri rama krishna could eat very little ram said to him nitya gopal will eat from your plate master why from my plate why ram why not nitya gopal was also in an ecstatic mood the master put a morsel or two into his mouth with his own hand some devotees from kon nagar arrived by boat they entered sri rama krishna's room singing kirtan afterwards they went out to take some refreshments narottam was in the room the master said to him and the other devotees the music of the kon nagar devotees was dull music should be so lively as to make everyone dance one should sing a song like this see how all nadia is shaking under the waves of goranga's love and along with it these lines behold the two brothers have come who weep while chanting hari's name the brothers who in return for blows offer to sinners hari's love and these two god and nitai ye blessed brothers i have heard how kind you are and therefore i have come to you the devotees were taking the prasad it was a sumptuous feast sri rama krishna said to am have not you invited the mukherjee's ask surendra to feed the musicians bipin sarkar arrived the devotees introduced him to the master sri rama krishna sat up and said to the devotees give him a seat and some betel leaf he said to bipin humbly i am sorry not to be able to talk to you there is a great crowd today pointing to grindra sri rama krishna said to babu ram give him a carpet nitya gopal was sitting on the floor the master asked a devotee to give him a carpet too physician mahendra of sinthi arrived the master smiling asked rahal by a sign to have the physician examine his pulse turning to ramlal the master said be friendly with grease goes then you will get a free ticket to the theater 
Narendra had been talking a long time with Hajra on the porch. Since his father's death, Narendra had been having financial worries. He entered the room and took a seat. Hajra's eccentricities. Master to Narendra, were you with Hajra? Both of you are in the same boat. You know the saying about the two friends. You are away from your country and he is away from his beloved. Hajra too needs 1500 rupees laughter. Hajra says Narendra has acquired 100% sattva, though still there is in him a pink glow of Rajas, but I have 120 five percent pure sattva all love i say to hajra you indulge in reasoning only that is why you are so dry he retorts no i am dry because i drink the nectar of the sun speaking of pure bhakti i say to hajra a real devotee does not pray to god for money or riches hajra replies when the flood of divine grace descends, the rivers overflow, and further the pools and canals are filled. By the grace of God, one gets not only pure devotion, but also the six supernatural powers and money too. Narendra and many other devotees were seated on the floor. Grace entered the room and joined them. Master to Grace. I look on Narendra as Atma, I obey him. Grace, is there anyone you don't obey? Master smiling, he has a manly nature and I have the nature of a woman. He is a noble soul and belongs to the realm of the indivisible Brahma. Grace went out to have a smoke. Narendra to the master, I had a talk with Grace goes, he is indeed a great man. We talked about you. Master, what did you say about me? Narendra, that you are illiterate and we are scholars. Oh, we talked in that when Laughter. Money Malik to the Master. You have become a Pandit without reading a book. Goal of Scriptural Study. Master to Narendra and the others. Let me tell you this really and truly. I don't feel sorry in the least that I have not read the Vedanta or the other scriptures. I know that the essence of the Vedanta is that Brahma alone is real and the world illusory. And what is the essence of the Gita? It is what you get by repeating the word ten times. Then it is reversed into Tagi, which refers to renunciation. The pupil should hear the essence of the scriptures from the Guru. Then he should practice austerity and devotions. A man needs the letter he has received from home as long as he has not learnt its contents. After reading it, however, he sets out to get the thing he has been asked to send. Likewise, what need is there of the scriptures if you know their essence? The next thing is the practice of spiritual discipline. Greece entered the room. Master to Greece, hello, what were you saying about me? I eat, drink and make merry? Greece, what should we have been saying about you? Are you a holy man? Master, no, nothing of the sort. Truly, I do not feel I am a holy man. Greece, I am not your equal even in joking. Master, I once went to Jagopal Singh's garden. I was wearing a red bordered cloth. Kesab was there. Looking at the red borders, Kesab said, What is this? Such a flash of color today? Such a display of red border? I said, 
I have to cast a spell on Kesav, hence this display. Narendra was going to sing again. Sri Ramakrishna asked him to take down the Tanpura from the wall. Narendra was a long time tuning it. The master and the devotees became impatient. Vinoda said he will tune it today and sing another day. Laughter. Sri Ramakrishna laughed and said, I feel like breaking the Tanpura to pieces. What is this? Only long tongue. Then he will practice Tana Tana Nere Nam Bhavnath. Everybody feels annoyed like this before a musical performance begins. Narendra still tuning. If you don't understand it, Master smiling. There he explains away our complaints. Narendra began to sing. Sri Ramakrishna was seated on the small couch. Nitya Gopal and the other devotees were on the floor. Narendra sang, O Mother, Thou my inner guide, ever awake within my heart, day and night Thou holdest me in Thy lap. Why dost Thou show such a tenderness to this unworthy child of Thine? Then he sang, O my lute of a single string, Sing the blessed mother's name, for she is the solace of my soul. And again, in dense darkness, O mother, thy formless beauty sparkles. Therefore the yogis meditate in a dark mountain cave. In an ecstatic mood, Sri Ramakrishna came down and sat by Narendra's side, he began to talk, still in ecstasy. Master, shall I sing why? To Nitya Gopal, what do you say? One should listen to singing to awaken the inner spirit. Nothing matters afterwards. He has kindled the fire. That is nice. Now all is silence. That is nice too. I am silent, you be silent too. The thing is to dive into the elixir of bliss. Shall I sing? Well, I may. Water is water, whether it is still or in waves. Narendra was seated near the master. He was constantly worried about his financial difficulties at home. He was now 23 years old. Sri Ramakrishna looked at him intently, Master to Narendra, smiling. Undoubtedly, you are Kha, but you have to worry about taxes. That is the trouble. By taxes, the Master meant Narendra's financial difficulties at home. Master, Krishna Kesor used to say that he was Kha. One day I visited him at his home and found him worried. He would not talk to me freely. I asked him, what is the matter? Why are you brooding like this? Did not pay my taxes. That's why I am worrying about. I laughed and said, how is that? You are surely Kha, the Akasa. Let the rascals take away your pots and pans. What is that to you? Occult powers to Narendra. So I am saying that you are Kha. Why are you so worried? Don't you know that Sri Krishna said to Arjuna, If you have one of the eight Siddhis, you may get a little power, but you will not realize me. By Siddhis, one may acquire powers, strength, money, and such things, but not God. Go beyond duality. Let me tell you something else. Go beyond knowledge and ignorance. People say that such and such even is a jnani, but in reality it is not so. Vasishta was a great jnani. 
but even he was stricken with grief on account of the death of his sons. At this, Lakshmana said to Rama, This is amazing. Rama, even Vasishta is so grief-stricken. Rama said, Brother, he who has knowledge has ignorance as well. He who is aware of light is also aware of the darkness. He who knows good also knows bad. He who knows happiness also knows misery. Brother, go beyond duality, beyond pleasure and pain, beyond knowledge and ignorance. To Narendra, so I am asking you to go beyond brother, both knowledge and ignorance. Sri Ramakrishna went back to his small couch. The devotees were seated on the floor. Surendra sat by his side. The master cast an affectionate look on him and began to give him advice. Advice to Surendra, master to Surendra. Come here every now and then. Nangata used to say that a brass pot must be polished every day. Otherwise it gets stained. One should constantly live in the company of holy men. The renunciation of women and gold is for sannyasis. It is not for you. Now and then you should go into solitude and call on, call on God with a yearning heart. Your renunciation should be mental. Unless a devotee is of the heroic type, he cannot pay attention to both God and the world. King Janka lived a householder's life only after attaining perfection through austerity and prayer. He fenced with two swords, the one of knowledge and the other of action. The master saying, this very world is a mansion of mirth. Here I can eat, hear, drink and make merry. Janka's might was unsurpassed. What did he lack of the world or the spirit? Holding to one as well as the other, he drank his milk from a brimming cup. Duties of householders. Master, for you as Chaitanya said, the disciplines to be practiced are kindness to living beings, service to the devotees and chanting the name of God. To Surendra, why do I say all this to you? You work in a merchant's office. I say this to you because you have many duties to perform there. You tell lies at the office, then why do I eat the food you offer me? Because you give your money in charity. You give away more than you earn. The seed of the melon is bigger than the fruit, as the saying goes. I cannot eat anything offered by miserly people. Their wealth is squandered in these ways. First, litigation. Second, thieves and robbers. Third, physicians. Fourth, their wicked children's extravagance. It is like that. Master praises charity. Your giving money away in charity is very good. Those who have money should give in charity. The miser's wealth is pretted away, but the money of the charitable person is saved. He spends it for a righteous purpose. At Kamar Pukur, I have seen the farmers cutting channels to irrigate their fields. Sometimes the water rushes in with such a force that the ridges around the field Fields are washed away and the crops destroyed. For this reason, the farmers make holes here and there in the ridges. Since the water escapes through the holes, the ridges are not destroyed by the rest of the water. Furthermore, the escaping water deposits soft clay in the fields, which increases their fertility and give a richer crop. 
he who gives away in charity achieves great results he achieves the four fruits dharma artha kama and moksha the devotee is listened with great attention to sri rama krishna's words surendra i cannot meditate well i repeat the divine mother's name now and then lying in bed i repeat her name and fall asleep master that is enough you remember her don't you there are two kinds of yoga mano yoga and karma yoga to perform following the guru's instructions such pious acts as worship pilgrimage and service to living beings is called karma yoga the duties that janaka performed are also called karma yoga the meditation and contemplation of the yogi is called mano yoga sometimes i say to myself in the kali temple o oh mother the mind is nothing but yourself therefore pure mind pure buddhi and pure atma are one and the same thing it was about dusk many of the devotees saluted sri rama krishna and started to go home the master went to the west porch bhavnath and aim were with him master to bhavnath why do you come here so seldom bhavnath smiling sir i visit you once in a fortnight i saw you in the street the other day so i did not come here master what do you mean you can what can you gain by mere seeing touch and talk are also necessary the evening worship had begun in the temples it was the eighth day of the bright fortnight of the moon the temple domes the courtyard the gardens and the trees were shining in the moonlight the ganges was flowing north with a murmuring sound sri rama krishna sat on the small couch in his room absorbed in contemplation of the divine mother the evening worship was over one or two devotees were still in the temple garden narendra had left sri rama krishna was pacing the veranda north east of his room am stood there looking at him suddenly he said to am ah how sweet narendra's music is am yes sir that song beginning with in dense darkness is particularly beautiful master you were right that song has a deep meaning a part of my mind is still drawn to it am yes sir master meditation in darkness is prescribed in the tantra master and grease grease goes came and stood by sri rama krishna who had started to sing is kali my mother really black the naked one of blackest hue lights the lotus of the heart Sri Rama Krishna was filled with divine fervor standing with one arm resting on Grace's body or he sang why should i go to ganga or gaya to kashi kanchi or parbhas so long as i can breathe my last with kali's name upon my lips what need of rituals has a man what need of devotions any more if he repeats the mother's name at the three holy hours rituals may pursue him close but never can they or take him then he saying once for all this time i have thoroughly understood from one who knows it well i have learned the secret of bhava a man has come to me from a country where there is no night 
and now I cannot distinguish day from night any longer. Rituals and devotions have all grown profiles for me. My sleep is broken. How can I slumber any more? For now I am wide awake in the sleeplessness of yoga. O Divine Mother, made one with thee in yoga, sleep at last. My slumber I have lulled asleep for every more, evermore. I bow my head, says Prasad, before desire and liberation. Knowing the secret that Kali is one with the highest Brahma, I have discarded once for all both righteousness and sin. As Sri Ramakrishna looked at grace, his ecstatic fervor became more intense. He sang, I have surrendered my soul at the fearless feet of the mother. Am I afraid of death any more? Unto the tuft of hair on my head is tied the almighty mantra, Mother Kali's name. My body I have sold in the marketplace of the world and with it have brought Sri Durga's name. Intoxicated with God, Sri Ramakrishna repeated the lines. My body I have sold in the marketplace of the world and with it have brought Sri Durga's name. Looking at grace and aim, he said, Divine fervor fills my body and robs me of consciousness. Here consciousness means consciousness of the outer world. One needs the knowledge of reality and Brahma. Selfless divine love, bhakti, love of God is the only essential thing. One kind of bhakti has a motive behind it. Again, there is a motiveless love, pure devotion, a love of God that seeks no return. Kesab Sen and the members of the Brahmos Maj did not know about motiveless love. In this love there is no desire. It is nothing but pure love of the lotus feet of God. There is another kind of love known as Urjit Bhakti. Urjita Bhakti, an ecstatic love of God that overflows as it were. When it is awakened, the devotee laughs and weeps and dances and sings. Chaitanya Deva is an example of this love. Rama said to Lakshmana, Brother, if anywhere you see the manifestation of Urjita Bhakti, know for certain that I am there. Grace, everything is possible through your grace. But what was I before and see what I am now? Master, you had latent tendencies so they are manifesting themselves now nothing happens except at the proper time take the case of a patient nature has almost cured him when the physician prescribes a herb and asks him to drink its juice after taking the medicine he is completely cured now is the patient cured by the medicine or does he get well by himself? Who can tell? Lakshmana said to Lava and Kusa, You are mere children. You don't know Rama's power. At the touch of his feet, Ahalya, who had been turned into a stone, got back her human form. Love and Kusa said, Revered sir, we know that we have heard the story. In the Treta Yoga, Rama will pass this hermitage. You will become Hanuman being again at the touch of his feet. Now who can tell whether the miracle happened in order that 
the sage's words should be fulfilled or on account of rama's holiness everything happens by the will of god if your spirit if your spiritual consciousness has been awakened at this place know that i am only an instrument uncle moon is everybody's uncle all happens by the will of god grace smiling did you say by the will of god what i am saying is the very same thing all laugh master to grace by being childless one can speedily realize god there are several kinds of people who do not attain divine knowledge first a man with a perverse mind he is not childless second one who is very fastidious about outer purity third a doubting person sri ramakrishna spoke highly of nitya gopal's ecstasy three or four devotees stood near sri ramakrishna on the veranda and listened to his words about the exalted state of the paramahansa the master said a paramahansa is always conscious that god alone is real and all else illusory only the swan has the power to separate milk from a mixture of milk and water the swan's tongue secretes an acid that separates the milk from the mixture the paramahansa also possesses such a juice it is his ecstatic love for god that separates the real from the mixture of the real and the unreal through it one becomes aware of god and sees him wednesday february 25 1885 knowledge of brahma sri ramakrishna was at the house of grace goes in bospada lane kolkata it was about 3 o'clock when m arrived and prostrated himself before him the master was going to see a play at the star theater he was talking with the devotees about the knowledge of brahma master man experiences three states of consciousness waking dream and deep sleep those who follow the path of knowledge explain away the three states according to them brahma is beyond the three states it is also beyond the gross the subtle and the causal bodies and beyond the three gunas sattva rajas and tamas all these are maya like a reflection in a mirror the reflection is by no means the real substance brahma alone is the substance and all else is illusory the no words of brahma say further that it is identification of the soul with the body that creates the notion of duality in that state of identification the reflection appears real when this identification disappears a man realizes i am he i am brahma two paths of brahmagyana a devotee then shall we all follow the path of reasoning master reasoning is one of the paths it is the path of the vedantists but there is another path the path of bhakti it if a bhakta weeps longingly for the knowledge of brahma he receives that as well these are the two paths jnana and bhakti the ego of the divine incarnation one may attain the knowledge of brahma by either path some retain bhakti even after realizing brahma in order to teach humanity 
an incarnation of God is one of these. A man cannot, cannot easily get rid of the ego and the consciousness that the body is the soul. It becomes possible only when, through the grace of God, he attains Samadhi, Nirvikalpa Samadhi, Jada Samadhi. The ego of the incarnations returns to them when they come down from the plane of Samadhi, but then it is the ego of knowledge or the ego of devotion. Through the ego of knowledge they teach man. Sankracharya kept the ego of knowledge. Through the ego of devotion, Chaitanya Deva tasted divine love and enjoyed the company of devotees. They talked about God and chanted His name, the path of bhakti. Since one cannot easily get rid of the ego, a bhakta does not explain about Aveda states of waking, dream, and deep sleep. He accepts all the states. Further, he accepts the three gunas, sattva, rajas, and tamas. A bhakta sees that God alone has become the 24 cosmic principles, the universe and all living beings. He also sees that God reveals Himself to His devotees in a tangible form which is the embodiment of spirit. The Bhakta takes shelter under Vidya Maya. He seeks holy company, goes on pilgrimage and practices discrimination, devotion and renunciation. He says that since a man cannot easily get rid of his ego, he should let the rascal remain as the servant of God, the devotee of God. Meaning of liberation. But a bhakta also attains the knowledge of oneness. He sees that nothing exists but God. He does not regard the world as a dream, but says that it is God himself who has become everything. In a wax garden, you may see various objects, but everything is made of wax. But a man realizes this only when his devotion to God has matured. One gets jaundice when too much bile accumulates. Then one sees everything as yellow. From constantly meditating on Krishna, Radhika saw everything as Krishna. Moreover, she even felt that she herself had become Krishna. If a piece of lead is kept in a lake of mercury, a long time it turns into mercury. The cockroach becomes motionless by constantly meditating on the Kumira worm. It loses the power to move. At last it is transformed into a Kumira. Similarly, by constantly meditating on God, the Bhakta loses his ego. He realizes that God is He and He is God. When the cockroach becomes the Kumira, everything is achieved. Instantly, one obtains liberation. As long as God retains the ego in a man, he should establish a definite relationship with God, calling on Him as master, mother, friend, or the like. I spent one year as a handmaid, the handmaid of the Divine Mother, the embodiment of Brahma. I used to dress myself as a woman. I put on a nose ring, one can conquer lust by assuming the attitude of a woman. Master warns lust. One must worship the Adya Shakti. She must be propitiated. She alone has assumed all female forms. Therefore, I look on all women as mother. The attitude of looking on women as mother is very pure. The Tantra mentions the 
vamachara method also but that is not a good method it causes the aspirant's downfall a devotee keeping an object of enjoyment near him has reason to be afraid looking on women as mother is like fasting on the ekadashi day without touching even a drop of water in this attitude there is not the slightest trace of sensual enjoyment another way of observing the ekadashi allows the taking of fruit and the like one can also observe the day by eating luchi and curries but my attitude is not to touch even a drop of water while i observe the fast i worship the surasi as my mother i look down all parts of her body as those of my mother this attitude of regarding god as mother is the last word in sadhana o god thou art my mother and i am thy child this is the last word in spirituality sanyasi's discipline the sanyasi's way of living is like observing the ekadashi fast without taking even a drop of water if he clings to enjoyment then he has reason to be afraid woman and gold is enjoyment if a monk enjoy enjoys it he is swallowing his own spital as it were there are different kinds of enjoyment money wealth name fame and sense pleasure it is not good for a sanyasi to sit in the company of a woman devotee or even to talk to her this endures him and others as well then others cannot learn from him he cannot set an example to humanity a sanyasi keeps his body in order to teach mankind to sit with a woman or talk to her a long time has also been described as a kind of sexual intercourse there are eight kinds to listen to a woman and enjoy her conversation is one kind to speak about a woman is another kind to whisper to her privately is a third kind to keep something belonging to a woman and enjoy it is a fourth kind to touch her is a fifth therefore a sanyasi should not salute his guru's young wife touching her feet these are the rules of sanyasis householders discipline but the case is quite different with a householders with householders after the birth of one or two children the husband and wife should live as brother and sister the other seven kinds of sexual intercourse do not injure them much a householder has various debts debts to the gods to the fathers and to the races he also owes a debt to his wife he should make her the mother of one or two children and support her if she is a chaste woman householders do not know who is a good wife and who is a bad wife who is a vidya shakti and who is an avidya shakti a vidya shakti a good wife has very little lust and anger she sleeps little she pushes her husband's head away from her she is full of affection kindness devotion modesty and other noble qualities such a wife serves all looking on all men as her children further she helps increase her husband's love of god she does not spend much money lest her husband should have to work hard and thus not get leisure to think of god manis manis women have different traits these are bad traits 
squint eyes and hollow eyes cattle like eyes lantern jaws like a calf's and pigeon breast grace what is the way for people like us different aspects of bhakti master bhakti is the only essential thing bhakti has different aspects the sattvic the rajasic and the tamasic one who has sattvic bhakti is very modest and humble but a man with the tamasic bhakti is like a highwayman in his attitude towards god he says o god i am chanting your name how can i be a sinner o god you are my own mother you must reveal yourself to me grace smiling it is you sir who teaches tamasic bhakti different kinds of samadhi master smiling there are certain signs of god vision when a man sees god he goes into samadhi there are five kinds of samadhi first the first he feels the mahavayu rise like an ant crawling up second he feels it rise like a fish swimming in the water third he feels it rises like a snake wriggling along fourth he feels it rise like a bird flying flying from one branch to another fifth he feels it rise like a monkey making a big jump the mahavayu reaches the head with one jump as it were and samadhi follows there are two other kinds of samadhi first the chitta samadhi when the aspirant totally loses outer consciousness he remains in that state a long time it may be for many days second the unmana samadhi it is to withdraw the mind suddenly from all sense objects and unite it with god 2m do you understand this am yes sir grace can one realize god by sadhana master people have realized god in various ways some through much austerity worship and devotion they have attained perfection through their own efforts some are born perfect as for example narda and sukhdeva they are called nitya siddha eternally perfect there are also those who have obtained perfection all of a sudden it is like a man's unexpectedly coming into a great fortune again there are instances of people realizing god in a dream and by divine grace seeing the sri ramakrishna saying intoxicated with divine fervor can everyone have the vision of shama is kali's treasure for everyone oh what a pity my foolish mind will not see what is true sri ramakrishna remained in ecstasy a few moments grace and the other devotees were seated before him a few days earlier grace had been very rude to the master at the star theater but now he was a calm state of mind master to grace this mood of yours is very good it is peaceful i prayed about you to the divine mother oh mother make him peaceful so that he won't abuse me grace to m i feel as if someone were pressing my tongue i can't talk sri rama krishna was still in an indrawn mood he seemed to be gracefully forgetting the man and the objects around him he tried to bring his mind down to the relative world he looked at the devotees 
looking at M, he said, they are, they all come to Dakshineswar, let them, mother knows everything, to a young man of the neighborhood, he said, hello, what do you think, what is the duty of man, all sat in silence, to Narayan, he said, don't you want to pass the examinations, but my dear child, a man freed from bondage is Shiva, entangled in bondage he is Jiva. Sri Rama Krishna was still in the God intoxicated mood. There was a glass of water near him. He drank the water. He said to himself, Why I have drunk water in this mood? It was not yet dusk. Sri Ramakrishna was talking to Atul, who was seated in front of him. Atul was Greece's brother and a lawyer of the High Court of Calcutta. A Brahmin neighbor was also seated near him. Master to Atul, all I want to tell you is this. Follow both. Perform your duties in the world and also cultivate love of God. <clears throat> Brahman, can anyone but a Brahmin achieve perfection? Master, why should you ask that? It is said that in the Kali Yuga, the Sudras achieve love of God. There are the instances of Savri, Ruhidas, the untouchable, Guhaka and others. Narayan smiling. Brahmins and Sudras all are one. Brahmin, can a man realize God in one birth? Master, is anything impossible for the grace of God? Suppose you bring a light into a room that has been dark a thousand years. Does it remove the darkness little by little? The room is lighted all at once. To Atul, intense renunciation is what is needed. One should be like an unsheathed <coughs> sword. When a man has that renunciation, he looks on his relatives as black cobras and his home as a deep well. One should pray to God with sincere longing. God cannot but listen to prayer if it is sincere. All sat in silence, pondering Sri Ramakrishna's words. Master to Atul, what is worrying you is that you have not that grit, that intense restlessness for God. How to cultivate longing for God? Atul, how can we keep our minds on God? Master, Abhyasa Yoga, the yoga of practice. You should practice calling on God every day. It is not possible to succeed in one day. Through daily prayer, you will come to long for God. How can you feel that restlessness if you are immersed in worldliness day and night? Formerly, Jadu Malik enjoyed spiritual talk. He liked to engage in it himself. But nowadays, he doesn't show that much interest. He surrounds himself with flatterers day and night and indulges in worldly talk. It was dusk. The lamp was lighted in the room. Sri Ramakrishna chanted the divine names. He was singing and praying. He said, chant the name of Hari. Repeat the name of Hari. Sing the name of Hari. Again he said, Rama, Rama, Rama. Then, O Mother, thou dost ever enjoy thine eternal sports. Tell us, O Mother, what is the way? We have taken refuse in thee. We have taken shelter at thy feet. Finding Greece, restless Sri Ramakrishna remained 
साइलेंट ए मोमेंट ही आस्ट तेज चंद्रा टू सिट नियर हिम द बॉडी सेट नियर द बॉय सेट नियर द मास्टर ही विस्पर्ड टू एम दैट ही वुड हैव टू लीव सून मास्टर टू एम वट डिड ही सी एम ही सेट ही वुड हैव टू गो होम मास्टर वाई डू आई अट्रैक्ट दिस बॉयज टू मी सो मच दे आर प्योर वेसल्स अनटचड बाई वर्ल्डलीनेस ए मैन कैनॉट एसिमिलेट इंस्ट्रक्शन इफ इज माइंड इज स्टैंड विद वर्ल्डलीनेस मिल कैन बी सेफली kept in a new pot but it turns sour if kept in a pot in which curd has been made you may wash a thousand times a cup that was held a solution of garlic but still you cannot remove the smell master at the theater sri rama krishna arrived at the star theater on bidan street to see a performance of vrishta ketu he sat in a box facing the south m and other devotees were near him master to m has narendra come m yes sir the performance began karna and his wife padmavati sacrificed their son to please god who had come to them in the guise of a brahmin to test karna's charity during this scene one of the devotees gave a suppressed sigh sri ramakrishna also expressed his sorrow after the play sri ramakrishna went to the recreation room of the theater grace and narendra were already there the master stood near narendra and said i have come Sri Rama Krishna took a seat. The or the orchestra was playing in the auditorium. Master to the devotees, I feel happy listening to the concert. Concert. The musicians used to play on the Senai at Dakshineswar, and I would go into ecstasy. Noticing this, a certain sadhu said, "This is a sign of the." knowledge of brahma the orchestra stopped playing and sri ramakrishna began the conversation master to grish does this theater belong to you grish it is ours sir master ours is good it is not good to say mine people say i and mine <laughs> they are egotistic small minded people narendra the whole world is, is a theater master yes yes that is right in some places you see the play of vidya and some and in some the play of avidya narendra everything is the play of vidya master true true but a man realizes that when he has the knowledge of brahma but for a bhagta who follows the path of divine love both exist vidya maya and avidya maya please sing a little narendra singh upon the sea of blissful awareness waves of ecstatic love arise rapture divine play of god's bliss oh how enthralling wondrous waves of the sweetness of god ever new and ever enchanting rise on the surface ever assuming forms ever fresh then once more in the great communion all are merged as the barrier walls of time and space dissolve and vanish dance then o mind dance in delight with hands upraised chanting lord hari's holy name as narendra singh the words then once more in the great communion all are merged sri ramakrishna said to him 
one realizes this after attaining the knowledge of Brahma, then all is Vidya. Brahma, as you said, as Narendra saying the line, dance in delight with hands upraised, chanting Lord Hari's holy name, the master said to him, sing that line twice. After the song, Sri Ramakrishna resumed the conversation. Greece, Devendra Babu has not come. He says in a mood of wounded pride, we have not any stuff inside us, no feeling of thickened milk. We are filled only with worthless lentil paste. Why should we go there? Master surprised. Does he say that? He never said so before. Sri, Ramak Sri Ramakrishna took some refreshments and handed some to Narendra. Jatin Deva to the master. You always say, Narendra, eat this, eat that. Are the rest of us fools? Are we like straw washed, assured by the flood tide? Sri Ramakrishna loved Jatin dearly. Jatin visited the master now and then at Dakshineswar and occasionally spent the night there. He belonged to an aristocratic family of Shobhavazar. The master said laughingly to Narendra, he is talking about you. Sri Ramakrishna laughed and showed his affection to Jatin by touching his chin. He said to Jatin, come to Dakshineswar, I will give you plenty to eat. The master went into the auditorium to see a farce. He sat in a box. He laughed at the conversation of the maid servant. After a while, he became absent-minded and whispered a few words to M. Master to M, well, is what Greece goes is true. Greece had lately been speaking of Sri Ramakrishna as an incarnation of God M. Yes, sir, it must be true. Otherwise, why should it appeal to our minds? Master, you see a change is coming over me. The old mood has changed. I am not able to touch any metal now. M. Listened to these words in wonder. Master, there is a very deep meaning in this new mood. Was the master hinting that a god-man cannot bear any association with worldly treasure? Master to M. Well, do you notice any change in me, M? In what sense, sir? In what respect, sir? Master, in my activities, M. Your activities are increasing as more people come to know about you. Master, do you see what I said before is now coming true? After a few moments, he said, Can you tell me why Paltu cannot meditate well? Sri Ramakrishna was ready to leave for Dakshineswar. He had remarked to a devotee about Greece, You may wash a thousand times a cup that has held a solution of garlic but it never but it is never possible to get rid of the smell altogether greece was offended by this remark when the master was about to leave greece spoke greece will the smell of garlic go master yes it will greece so you say it will master all smell disappears when a blazing fire is lighted if you heat the cup smelling of garlic, you get rid of the smell. It becomes a new cup. The man who says he will not succeed will never succeed. He who feels he is liberated is indeed liberated. And he who feels he is bound verily remains bound. He who forcefully says, I am free is certainly free and he who says day and night I am bound is certainly bound. So I conclude this video at this
point next video number 41 will start with chapter 37 the master and narendra sunday march 1 1885 pramhansa ramakrishna had a great affection for narendra who became vivekananda afterwards thank you for watching this video please like comment and share the video subscribe the channel and namaskar my dear friend thank you Thank you.